It's the final countdown to the last month of 2020. And I really want this year to be over because I don't want to suffer anymore. And 2021 is going to be a great year. I say whilst trying to convince myself. Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to my booktube channel. If you have yet to check out my East Asian reading vlog, I would highly recommend you go do so because I read some sensational books and I cry a lot. And there's also puppy content, so if you like puppies, you should definitely go watch that video. And if you have yet to check out my Twitter nor my bookstagram, go check that out as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. So for today's video I'm coming at you with my December TBR and also my last TBR of 2020 and that is so weird. It means that I've done like six TBRs, five TBR videos so far and it means that I've been on booktube for six months which is a weird thing to think about and also a weird thing to process but I've been doing a lot of reflecting recently and I have a video coming about like what went well in 2020 and things that I want to do in 2021. I'm super thankful to have all of you here with me and it's just gonna be really great and I cannot wait to read a lot more books with you and come up with some new content plans for 2021 and as always if if you have any suggestions as to what content you'd like me to create, just pop that down in the comment section down below and I'll take your ideas into consideration. So for December's TBR, I'm not reading as much as I would like, purely because there are some secret books that I'm keeping hidden for now, because one, one of the ideas isn't probably going to be live until February, and two, the other book is going to be for a secret reading vlog that I'm doing at the end of this month for Christmas. But we do have two books from the November TBR that I haven't yet finished. The first one is The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. Now, yeah, this has been on my TBR since October. I'm getting it read this month. This is the book that I'm going to read first because I just need to get it read. And then the other book is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. This was on my TBR for last month. However, I didn't get to it, but I would really, really like to read this book before the end of the year and then maybe go on to the Camelot Betrayal in January, perhaps. To kind of summarize them in one sentence, this is this continuation of The Bone Season, which follows Paige Mahoney, a clairvoyant, in a society that doesn't like clairvoyants. One day she's captured and taken to Oxford where the Raphaim rule and she's given it to the Raphaim warden in order to serve him and it's a story of survival. The Guinevere Deception follows Guinevere obviously but she is bound to be wed to Prince Arthur. However, Guinevere is a changeling, an agent sent by Merlin in order to protect Arthur from dangers within Camelot that may seek to undo the work that he's been doing. And so both of these books are really interesting and both of these books are ones that I'm really looking forward to reading soon. And again, just the nakedness on the Guinevere Deception, a sword, like, we all know swords are my thing, and so I'm really glad about this. And then the Mime Order basically continues the stunning work of the Bone Season in having this dials print on it as well, and so just naked books are really winning this December. The next book that I want to read in the month of December is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is one that I'm buddy reading with Molly, who is such a stunning creator, such a amazing soul, an amazing person, and we're both buddy reading this together. It's very white. It's just amazing, and she is my fellow Sherlock Holmes. I love her. It's just a plain white nakedness with like a silver title which is quite stunning actually and then the insides are orange so I mean we love to see it but yeah the year of the witching has been one that's been on my mind for quite some time I adore the US cover a lot however the UK cover is equally as gorgeous and simplistic, and so I really love it. So The Year of the Witching follows Emmanuel, who does her best to follow the church and the holy protocols that have been surrounding the town of Bethel for ages as the holy prophets came and burnt four witches and cleansed the land. However, through her journey through the Darkwood, why her mother once consorted with witches, and suddenly everything begins to make sense. And then Emmanuel then discovers that change must come to Bethel, and it must start with her. And as the truth about the prophets and their history are revealed, Emmanuel then realizes what must be done. And this just sounds so amazing. I think it's classed as a horror book, and I think a horror in December would just be really cool. And I'm really excited to read this with Molly and get like our general thoughts. I think we're starting next week, and so I'm really excited to be getting into this. And it just seems so amazing. I'm really excited to be reading more books by black authors. I saw that Reagan read this and rated it four stars on Goodreads, so I'm really 
really excited for reading this and I'm really excited to like get into it. The next book that I'll then be reading in the month of December is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. This is the ARC version that was sent to me by Penguin, which I'm really, really thankful for. Karen M. McManus is an author that me and my best friend Caitlin bonded over and we read basically a lot of her books. And so we're both really excited to be reading her new book, The Cousins. Just from the synopsis, it was very interesting to me, very intriguing, very much up Karen M. McManus's alley in terms of writing, but also bringing something new to her writing collection. And so I'm really excited to be getting into this. So this basically follows Millie, Aubrey, and Jonah's story, who are cousins, but don't really know each other that well. They're just very distant. Their grandmother had like disinherited all of their parents when they were younger. And so it's very weird when they receive an invitation to come to the grandmother's house. Their parents are all clear on one point, not going is not an option as they want to get back into their grandmother's good graces, most likely because they want that inheritance money. And so when they arrive on the island resort, they realize that their grandmother has different plans for them and they realize their family history is much darker and much more mysterious than they anticipated. And what pulled them apart years ago is still around and the cousins will learn everything and they'll never feel the same way about their family again. And so this is really, really intriguing and really exciting. And so I'm really hoping that this is able to deliver quite a thrilling, suspenseful story whilst also showing us three distinct perspectives and I'm just excited for it and I'm really, really hoping it is able to deliver. I'm also really excited for when Caitlin reads it so then we can both discuss about the cousins because that's the one thing about books. I find that if someone else is also reading it, it encourages you to read it more because then you can discuss with that person and just get to appreciate their company on a whole new level. And especially with lockdowns and quarantines going in place all around the world at the moment, I definitely think books are a great way to still connect with someone and still connect with a bunch of people. Like we see this through the book community. I just think that it's a really great way to communicate and just talk and just have something to do that you don't have to go outside for. And so the next book that I'm going, well, the next novella that I'm going to be reading this month is one that I got an Illumicrate special edition of, but it is This Is How You Lose The Time War by Amal Edmota and Max Gladstone. And so I'm really excited for this. I don't know much about this novella, except for the fact it's blue and red and they're time travelers. They're from rival agencies going against one another and they leave each other letters. However, they can't help but like, like each other, even though they're supposed to be enemies. And I don't know whether it's lovers or like friends, but I'm really excited to be reading it. I'm really excited to like get into it. I've heard a lot of resoundingly good things about it. I've seen so many people hype this up. And so I'm really excited to like delve into this soon. Just this way that it's just got two stunning like additions. Yes, this is two copies of the same novella, but one's blue and one is red. And I just think it's a good way to like buddy read a book with someone. You could just literally give one of the copies to someone else who you trust because we all know how picky we are with who we give our books to and just be like, oh yeah, let's buddy read this. And then you both read the book and you both have like matching editions and it's just so cute and also the, these editions both come with an author letter in both books so it's just it's cute and I'm really really excited about it. It's only 198 pages so it's definitely going to be quite a quick read for me and so yeah I'm really excited to be delving into This Is How You Lose The Time War this month. Next we then have the late night book club pick for the month of December. This one I'm quite excited for but also I'm a bit nervous for because I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard very good things about it. Like these, this has become some people's favorite book of all time. However, I've also heard quite mixed things about it with the way that this book can be quite Eurocentric and just white. The next book that I'm going to be reading for the Late Night Book Club is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is the Alcray exclusive edition and just look how simply gorgeous this is. This is just so stunning. There is no dust jacket with this, it's just a hardback, and this is the edition I'll be reading, purely because it also has the ribbon bookmark as well. However, I also own three other editions of this book. So, I own this edition of The Visible Life of Addie LaRue, which is the Waterstones exclusive edition that has been signed by V.E. Schwab himself. As you can see, this has a tree and Addie LaRue on the side. The next copy that I then own is the Forbidden Planet exclusive edition, which is much more bluer than the other one. The Forget-Me-Nots are blue, the lines are blue, and it has blue sprayed edges. This one is also signed, and on the nakedness, we just have Addie 
on her own. And it's got a blue shimmer refoil to it, and it's stunning. And then finally, the last Addy Woo copy that I then own is the Illumicrate Exclusive Edition that is just black and white. It comes with grey slash silvery sprayed edges that's got glitter on them, which is iconic. And this one is also signed, and underneath we have a heart tree that is a silvery foil as opposed to the blue and gold of the others. I'll be unboxing the Illumina Crate box for this book in a future video, so don't worry, that unboxing is coming very soon. These are just stunning, and I love them so much, but I'm gonna put them back on the shelf now. This is the edition that I'll be reading for the book club. I'll be making a lot of notes and annotations on it as well. So The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue starts in France 1714, in which a young woman named Addie LaRue makes a Faustian bargain with the devil in order to live forever. However, in return, she's cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets, and so follows a legacy of Addie trying to make her mark upon the world by influencing people to make big changes. And so everything seems to be going according to plan. However, she is forgotten and the cycle continues. However, one day she manages to meet a young boy in a bookstore and he seems to remember her name. And so that's where the plot starts. And so I'm really, really excited to kind of get into this and see what Adilu does in the 300 years that has passed since then. And I just think it's gonna be quite cool. It's gonna be really interesting to see kind of where Addy goes on her adventures. Does she stay in France or does she go around the world or does she just commit to a few countries in Europe? Who knows? But I am really excited to be reading this and discussing this book on Noelle's channel at the end of this month. And so it's gonna be really exciting. And then finally, the last three books that I'm gonna be reading in the month of December are one that I'm hoping to do for a series reading vlog this month. However, it depends on whether I have the time. The series that I'm hoping to read in question is the His Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman. This is basically inspired by the fact that one, it is winter, and so it's the perfect time to read Northern Lights, but also two, the TV show is out at the moment, and I'd really love to reread the book series in order to kind of get a feel for it, because I read the book series a long time ago. I think when I was like seven or eight, I read, I first read the His Dark Materials series, like I read a lot when I was a kid. It's been 12 years, holy shit. I wanna just see how much I remember from this series, but I think I'll be like kind of going back into this for the very first time again, because I just, I, can't, I don't remember much. And cause my brain is like, I need to make room. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. So I think this is something that's been gotten rid of, but I'm really excited to be reading it. And the cover art is just stunning. Cause we have Northern Lights, The Subtle Knife, and then the Amber Spyglass, and every single book is stunning. Every single book. So the His Dark Materials trilogy follows Lyra Belanqua, who has a demon, a figment of her consciousness, personified into a creature that is attached to her. And so both of them are launched on a journey that will change the world because Lyra has this massive destiny and she, no one can influence her destiny. She has to discover everything on her own. And it's just very intriguing because we discover fighting armored bears, witches and flying balloons. We discover what the meaning of dust is, which is exciting. And yeah, and plus I have to read, I think it's The Secret Commonwealth next semester for university for one of my science fiction fantasies module. So it's definitely gonna be good to read the trilogy and get a refresher of the trilogy before I delve into the book of dust. So yeah, I am excited and I cannot wait to read this. And I just think it's gonna be quite a nice, like chill Christmassy reading vlog as well, because obviously His Dark Materials is such like a wintry read and such like a, nice relaxing read. I don't know, I just feel comforted whilst reading this. Yeah, I'm excited to read it and get into it. And yeah, I think that is everything for this TBR video. Again, I'm just super excited for like finishing 2020 and going forth to 2021 with all the new ideas that I have. And I definitely think 2021 is going to be a great year for this channel and for all of you as well. I'm hoping to have some great plans in how to get you more involved. If you have any ideas whatsoever in ways that you think I can incorporate a more community feel or more videos that you'd like to see in 2021, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your suggestions as I'm coming up with some content plans for the next few months and I would really really like you to get involved on it as well. And so yeah, 
that is everything for this video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. This week's shout out fades goes out to my lovely Mrs. Holmes, Molly. I'll have her booktube channel linked in the description down below. She's just a stunning, stunning person and a bright ray on this community. And yeah, she's just amazing. And I love you to Molly. I love you, Molly. And yeah. And if you wanted to find me on any other social media platforms, I'll have them linked in the description down below, along with my coffee and my Amazon wishlist page, just in case you wanted to donate any amount of money or books to help support this channel any further. And as always, those options are optional. And yeah, I guess that is everything for this video. And so yeah, I guess until the next video, bye friends. <laughs>